Before we start, I'd like to thank everybody who is helping us out and becoming a patron, donating a small amount of money to uh, get this and keep us going to make sure this project works. There's 66 of you, $142 a month. Okay, hello, welcome back. Hey, last uh, video, uh, I uh, introduced you to the axle stand and measured it. And uh, yeah, I did measure the whole thing out. Uh, which I actually found this to be an imperial size for some unknown reason. I think it must be the the age of the axle stand. Uh, I, I found these in a skip and done them up. So, uh, yeah, they've had a history. Well, what I've done is go ahead and measure the whole lot. I then went to the engineers. He priced it up for me. Materials come to £60 for both axle stands. Now, I, uh, I didn't actually notice this before because I just take things like this for granted until we got a new axle stand set, which are the red ones with tubes on them. Uh, yeah, we've got plenty of different types of axle stands, but you can see these ones are a different design made of tube. And we've been using the same sort of design. Um, this is uh, just two collars and some uh, angle iron. You can see that here. That's not rocket science to make this sort of stuff when you can actually uh, see it. And that is the general rule. If you can see it in your mind, you can make it. A safe working load rating is 10 tons per stand. Um, they're very handy and you'll see them here being used on a, a Volvo to hold it up while the axle's been taken off. Right, so yeah, these are the other stands I'm going to make eventually, which are, are, are long reach stands. You can see the um, just flat bar and a couple of tubes, 60mm and 70mm tubes. And uh, yeah, basically we stand motors on these when we're using them on the ramps. However, I'm going to make one of these to... Uh, uh, or a set of these, should I say, so I can uh, do some axles on them. Uh, axle stands, you can see, I just want to enlighten you to this, a uh, six-ton heavy-duty axle stand, lifetime warranty for £21. Now, SGS actually do some very good bargains, and people I've talked to can't complain about the equipment you got there. I would say that the uh, metals that from uh, cheap axle stands are made from Chinesium, which is imported from China. Other things that are a little bit more expensive are made to a high quality, and you've got to remember this. Stuff that we're going to make ourselves, obviously it's going to cost money. You pay for the materials and you're not paying for your labour, so they'll work out cheaper and you get the satisfaction of making stuff to a quality. What you've got to be careful of is when it says uh, six ton axle stands at £31 or £38.39, including VAT, what you're actually buying is two three ton axle stands. So you can see here weight capacity per pair is six tons. You get your height, uh, maximum height 615. A safe working load per stand is three tons. Obviously, uh, each one a corner on uh, a Land Rover's fine there's not an issue um, but like i say just be aware that when you're buying six ton axle stands you uh, as a set they are actually only three tons each rated and these are quite small yeah you can see one here it's on the corner of a daf the whole vehicle weighs a bit nearly seven tons but on this area here it will weigh less than three tons so sometimes we use these at short little ones which are competent and if anybody recognizes a farm jack which is the old type of uh, high lift one well we're still using that one anyway the metal's not here at the moment uh, i'll get it monday um, anyway, hard week at work and it, it does seem like Groundhog Day. I've just had the same problems over and over again, which are mainly ABS faults. Until I got to Saturday, which I had to go in Saturday afternoon before I was going to leave. Electric window. Can you imagine what happened to this one? Very frustrating. It dropped out of the runners, which is not good. Another repair to do. Now, if you remember, I said we were going to make uh, an LT230 uh, stand for the jack. Yes, I did have the metal and I put it down somewhere and I lost it. I have to apologise for that. But um, this place moves very quickly. I move things about when I'm doing jobs and I put things down and forget them. Anyway, my boss uh, was rather curious why I've got a bike rack on the back of my uh, vehicle. Basically because I've been scavenging bikes. Now this one here, brand new tyres have just fitted. I found this in a skip, believe it or not. And it's about 200 
hundred pounds worth of bicycle here, and I do know who owns it. He said he chucked it away because he didn't want it anymore. Uh, however, with a little bit of work, I didn't even put cables on. Um, the spindle's absolutely brilliant on this. These are really heavy duty. The whole bicycle, including the wheels, which are um, reinforced, uh, really, really good finds. And uh, now I'm telling you, in the last video, I was a bit skint. This is Eugene's uh, old bike, which he painted himself. You can see that the spray quality here is not too bad at all. Poor little guy, he got ill Saturday, his uh, temperature was about 40 degrees centigrade, not too good, so uh, no tutorial this weekend from him. How you feeling now bud? Um, well my stomach is like, annoyed. Hang on, yeah you ain't so hot at the moment. How come you're using a camera? Well, I'm just filming you. Just say hello to YouTube. Hello, guys. Yeah. Just As you can see, Eugene's actually playing Rainbow Six Siege. <laughs> yeah, because he's not actually not feeling too well. He's probably going to have the day off. He was day really, off. really trashed at the weekend. I guess and, you could say that. Yeah. Anyway, I've not done anything except repair this bicycle here. New brakes. Uh, cable tyres and uh, adjustment on the rear. I think we'll call that 20 quid for labour, two hours possibly. And for parts, they've already been paid for. And that's basically because I need to get more money coming in. Right, so while Eugene was ill, I did actually spend a, quite a few hours checking out ideas for how to cut this. Now, if you remember, this is just a pointer. Um, I said, just look at things and see how they're made. You can see a bit of angle here with two plates. You see how easy it could be to identify how parts are made. So this is uh, good. And also <laughs> spotting a shitty weld. Well, it's not a shitty weld. It's uh, just a, a patch that was repaired on this chassis at some time. Okay, it's got history and it's... Uh, it's had its day now. Now, this, uh, this chassis here is rusty. I steam cleaned it last year, and it's been stood up since then, and that's mainly surfaced rust further down. However, on the rear end, um, yeah, well, she's bursted through the seams here. You can see um, the rear end, yeah, well, it always is worse than what it looks, and that'll be most of that, the bottom end of that, and I can imagine where the tank is, that'll be rotten too. So I'm uh, not going to pay attention too much to this, because I'm going to cut this bit off of the vehicle and uh, redesign it, because, as I said, I'm going to cut this um, and remove most of the bodywork. Uh, she's a rusty old mess, and most D2s are because the chassis uh, weren't really rust-treated very well. And, uh, OK, this one survived a certain amount of time, but that is really, in all honesty, the end of the chassis. But we'll do something with it. I mean, we might as well modify it. Now, here's the D2 chassis. It's not actually got too many cross members on it. It is different to the Defender chassis. They're not compatible to weld them together at all. A D2 chassis is a lot thinner. Right, so with the plans, you can see the side view on the end, you have a curvature which dips down, okay? This is just to uh, assist with fitting body and protecting the tank, possibly. And this is it a little bit closer up. You can see where the spring hanger is. Now, if you cut off this piece of the chassis on the rear end, it can then have a straight extension put onto it, which obviously has got to match the, the same um, characteristics of the chassis, how it was made. But uh, let me just go on a bit further and explain this to you. I don't want to bobtail this. As you can see here um, the type of flatbed that we could put on it. The chassis, it has a curvature which comes up, a wheel arch over the axle and then goes straight, which is uh, very acceptable. Um, nice back end on this and uh, the rear end of the chassis, we could do something with this. I mean, obviously having a flatbed on uh, a double axle vehicle would be okay, but you can see the potential of what we could actually do with this with a flatbed. We can also, and I want to do this, is cut it somewhere here, 
All right, that's where the uh, compressor is for the uh, uh, airbags or the old compressor. Because it's a straight piece of um, box section or two C sections welded together, it should be quite easy. So looking back at our chassis, we can just um, cut uh, across here and then add an extension in. Um, maybe possibly 10 inches. I haven't worked it out yet. I've got to get some of the geometry right on this still. But you can see here the straight part, it's, uh, it just lends itself to, uh, to having an extension on it, and I don't see why not. Um, there's a link below which will take you to a website page which will show you what this guy did. He's double skinned his chassis, uh, so he has got the right effect. Now this is what I'm looking for. I'm not looking to get a box section, but the uh, two channel sections are welded together, which is, makes it look normal. What I do like on the rear end of the Discovery is the uh, tie rods, which have uh, got very substantial bushes. What I don't like is the Watts linkage. Okay, it works. However, it's uh, not what I'm used to. I prefer to have the traditional A-frame, so we're going to have to modify the axle and the chassis to accommodate for this. Right, so the wheelbase is about uh, 100 inches. Uh, you agree with me on that? That's from centre of the axle to centre of the axle, or centre of the wheels, whichever you want to do. I haven't uh, estimated this, but yeah, okay, let's say 100 uh, inches, and to add another extra 10 inches would actually not make it that much longer. Now, the bodywork is going to be an utter pain. Now, when you have the uh, uh, the B post here, you have a door. When you shut the door, it um, laps over the uh, the other door. Now, uh, you have a, a vehicle body mount here. So if you cut just behind the uh, front door, you're going to have issues because you need to move the mount. Okay, so there we go, body mount. Two of those, one either side. You also have a body mount here at the front, which is not an issue, but the main part of the body sits on this. You can see the four mounts here on the chassis very clearly. So depending on what we do with this body is depending how we uh, mount it back onto the chassis. Now, you can see in line here, you've got to cut through the door. Um, and if I had a cut here, and I'm saying if I had a cut here, then the body mount would definitely have to be moved. So if we had a uh, just a uh, chassis cab, for instance, we cut it here just before the roof curves. Um, we have a certain area at the back of the seat which you have to have for your seat to uh, lean back. All right, so that's the sort of area we've got to cut. Um, and the body mount, without any chassis extension, would have to be moved anyway. I'm not sure what people do, but this is uh, what I'm looking at. You'd have to have a, a new mount there on both sides, somewhere around that area. Okay, that's one option I've been thinking of, and I've been looking um, at quite a lot of different layouts, uh, the chassis layouts and the what have you, and uh, this is why I haven't cut anything yet, and I probably won't for a little while, because um, I'll strip it first, and then I'll do a cut. I mean, that's the only way I can do. Now, if I was looking at something like this with a flat bed on it, fine, okay, that really isn't too much of an issue. I could always go for a body kit here and you can see that it's actually probably got about 17 inches of uh, body at the rear. This one here is a double cab, which, okay, Range Rover and uh, yeah, that does look Range Rover-ish. It's not bad, but it's not my personal taste. This was found on the internet and just for instance, I thought I'd show you this. You can see how the bodywork is actually sloped at the back end. It's okay, it's, like I say, it's not my taste though, but you can see the flatbed there, and it's got a massive overhang over the back end. So um, as far as we're concerned, we're all right, whereas this is a definite no-no. You can see the wheel arch there. You might like this, but it just looks too short. Um, it's the wheel arch that is doing this. It's uh, showing you that it's just defining where the wheels are. On a uh, double cab, you can see that the uh, passenger doors at the rear will actually be more square and the axle will be further back. That just tends to be a standard for some reason. It looks nicer. 
if you look at this uh, Iveco chassis cab, for instance, this um, will define how you would have your chassis cab before you put a body or a flat bed on it. This is just well it's aesthetics more than anything and you can see how much smaller the uh, the cab door is even with a box on the back i know this is an iveco but you can see the proportions are, are actually right so the the rear would have to be straight up the back and not angled i know some people do it at an angle it doesn't look right to me and i'm going to make one deep cut leaving some of the wheel arch um still on there so if i decide that i'm gonna have uh, more space at the rear then at least i can utilize that now you can see that's the uh, seat pan at the back there underneath the seat and this is um, from the workshop manual you can see I'm, I'll, I'll just draw a line here where i'm going to cut and uh, i'll just leave myself some extra for now i don't think we'll go for a uh, uh, a double cab i don't think that's going to work somehow it's too much work however um this isn't the, the the best example but you can see where the space frame is or the the rollover cage this is what i want to actually fit on the vehicle as well and it's going to be a unique design um this we can't actually plan until we've got the bodywork cut. Now the other thing I've been putting a lot of thought into this is how the vehicle looks at the front. I like the uh, front end bumper low. Um, obviously if you were doing off-roading you'd want to get rid of the, uh, the piece up here because that will get caught. And so basically this is, this is more of uh, an idea rather than having too much taken away. Um, from the front end making the discovery look stupid this is uh, this is a nice form of uh, bumper somebody's uh, spent some time looking into this and uh, bumpers are not rocket science to make if you've got equipment to uh, to bend um, then or get somebody to do it then it's actually not that bad to do I, uh, I looked at this guy on YouTube, uh, one of our fellow Land Rover enthusiasts, and he's done quite an interesting bumper. Um, and what I actually like more than anything is what is on the front here. Um, that is easy to make. You can just see it's just flats um, cut. Okay. This also is very nice. This obviously is a winch bumper with a ball bar as well. We don't need to go for winch bumper, and I don't think I want a winch on the front of this because it's, it's, it's going to have too much weight. Now, this one here, I just happened to see it on Facebook the other day, and uh, this looks absolutely fantastic. This, uh, well, apparently, it was done for a film. These are up in auction in Australia. It's These are 110 Defenders. You can see the way the bumper has been arranged with some uh, wheel, and nothing's going to get caught up in there. Nothing's going to get damaged off-road. Uh, but just the actual shape of it, it, you could think about how to do this. It'd be complex to do, but it is possible. You have all flats on here, um, triangles and angles. So instead of curving metal, it is just basically, uh, um, well, it's like Minecraft. If you understand how kids do Minecraft these days, um, you can work out the concept on this. But I'll just let this run and uh, you can just see how nice this vehicle is. I don't know what you think about this, but I'm uh, very, very impressed. However, when you look on the inside, you can see that it has been cobbled together. It's got a frame and it's probably even plywood but uh, as it said it was uh, used for a film so uh, you know there you go it's just out of interest